What's up everyone, it's Austin here from Make Pop Music and Austin Hall Audio, and today we are back with another video. And for the video today, I wanted to do something that we haven't done in a minute, and that is recap my five favorite new plugins. So these are gonna be plugins that are within like a year old, some are newer than others, but these are plugins that I find myself going back to all of the time, and a lot of them are from smaller developers. So I figured it's a good chance to kind of spotlight some of these really cool companies that are making really, really cool plugins, get you guys some new tools, and uh, kind of just show you what I'm liking and why I'm liking it. So in this this video we'll look at five plugins and I'll explain what I like about them, where you can find them, how much they cost, and I'm going to show you them in real time actually working in a mix so you can kind of hear what they sound like. We'll go over some controls and do like a small little dive on each different one. So if you like this video make sure you like, comment, and subscribe and if you want to support the channel you can head over to makepopmusic.com. If you want to check out any of these plugins I will link those in the description as well. At the moment I don't think any of them are going to be affiliate links but if that changes they will have an asterisk beside them so you do know it's an affiliate link if you click on that you'll help us out but this video is not for that i really just want to show you guys some really really cool tools from some really really cool companies so let's jump into cubase and check that out all right now we're in cubase so we're going to look at five plugins and i'm just going to go one by one and kind of show you some of the features and what they sound like and I feel like the first plugin I should mention is a plugin called Greenhouse. This one is a little bit older in comparison to some of the ones that we're gonna talk about, but came out probably eight months ago, nine months ago. I can't remember the exact day, but I've been using it since it came out and I love it. Um, it is by Mixing Night Audio and I believe it's only $49. So to me, any plugin that's right around 50 bucks is a steal. You might as well get it just to kind of have it in your arsenal. But this plugin is really cool because I don't really have anything super similar to it. So this is kind of a first of its kind. And the way that this is kind of split up is you've got your two different panels. You've got a panel right here and you've got a panel right here. So this left panel is going to be a lot more focused towards like saturation effects. So you've got your heat, which is your saturation. You've got your sundial, which is almost kind of like a dry, wet intensity. You've got low cut and high cut. And you've got these infrared, ultraviolet, and gamma different modes that are just kind of different types of distortion and saturation. And that can go all the way from really, really subtle to very intense. So let me turn this second bracket off over here. We're not going to mess with the time-based effects quite yet. And let me just show you what this sounds like. So I'm going to set a loop, and then we'll play around with this in real time. All right, so I'm going to play around with some of the parameters as this kind of plays through. Just pay attention to what I'm doing on the screen and kind of see how it affects the sound. So you can see that you can go from something that's kind of slightly saturated all the way to very, very, very distorted. And I find that really cool because I just like the kind of tone of this distortion. I find it works really, really well on um, like 808s, synths, vocals, especially on like vocal effects. And I really, really like it for that. So I'm going to turn that off for now. And then we're going to go to the second module. And this is more time based effects. So you've kind of got like the Haas effect, hence the name. Um, where it's kind of splitting things left and right. But if I remember correctly, I believe Ken Lewis told me that this algorithm is set where it's never delaying things at the same time. So you're not going to get that kind of um, kind of phasey issue that you can get with things just like a kind of static Haas effect. This is moving things around by the millisecond just to kind of keep everything a little bit different. And you can add some crazy stereo width with these timers and this dry wet. But you can also start to add these weird like phasers and choruses kind of like similar effects with this fertilizer right here. And you've got your high cut to kind of filter that out. So let me loop this and kind of show you what I'm talking about. So you can get really, really crazy with this. You can even program like those weird kind of Travis Scott kind of delay throws. Um, and I find that this is just super versatile. I don't typically use it this hard. Like a go-to setting for me and my kind of mix would be somewhere like right around here. I'll drive the wet back. I'll drive this back. I do like the Lily setting. And then same thing over here. We'll kind of turn this back on and 
make this a little bit more subtle. And this is kind of how I'd use it in a mix. And that to me is gonna just give me a cool little bit of saturation and a nice little bit of width. And then in the mix, it sounds a little bit something like this. To me, Greenhouse is just like an instant vibe machine, so I 10 out of 10 recommend that. I've used it in videos before, but that's kind of my short little dive into that. Also, Mixing Night Audio and Ken Lewis are awesome people, so definitely go support them. The second plugin I have to talk about, and I'm sure some of you see this coming, is Kickstart 2. If you've ever watched any of our videos on the channel, you've seen me use Kickstart a million times. It's my go-to kind of natural you know, side chain compression kind of ducking tool. I don't really like volume shaper. I don't really like the LFO tool and sometimes setting up, a, uh, setting up a compressor, it's just annoying. But with Kickstart 1, it was basically set on a loop. You couldn't really use that as a kind of side chain trigger. But with this Kickstart 2 update, they've added the ability to side chain and to move around some of these parameters. So I'll show you around all of that in one second, but I should just let you know that this plugin is only $16, and if you have Kickstart 1, it's only a $5 upgrade, so to me, for 16 bucks, you should have Kickstart 2. It's really non-negotiable. This is gonna be my new go-to when I need to duck vocals out or kicks out for side chaining because sometimes a compressor, you have to set your threshold, you have to set your attack and your decay, and it gets really finicky and annoying, and if you don't line it up perfectly, you can start to have these weird issues where the movement doesn't really flow. But with Kickstart, it's a lot easier to make sure that that's not happening. So let me kick, uh, solo this kick and this 808. So what I've done is you can see right here, I turned it to audio mode. That's gonna trigger it as a side chain, and then I'm just sending that to my kick. So. And the cool thing is you've got your mix knob right here. So if you want it to duck, but not fully, you can just turn this at like 60%. And you can set this to time. So I've got it on a quarter note, but you can set it as a half. And now in Kickstart 2, you can drag all of these parameters right here. So if you want it like a super slow uh, kind of attack, And to me, having that ability to move those parameters around and move that mix around was a huge addition for Kickstart 2 to be able to sidechain things. And for all of my fans out there who might have like a super distorted 808 where they want to kind of keep that top end because they don't want it to duck, they really need that for texture, you can actually set your band here and you can kick, you can activate that Kickstart to only operate below a certain free, uh, like threshold. So let's say we want to leave some of that top end and we just want this Kickstart to operate around like 110 hertz. And I'll, I'll drag this back so you can hear it a little bit more. you can hear that it's leaving that top end the whole time. So it's not ducking that whatsoever. And I find that to be a super, super handy feature for ducking things like 808 or big synth bases that kind of have some texture up top that you need for that kind of attack on the kick, but the low end might just be clashing a little bit. So Kickstart 2, it's a really simple plugin. I don't need to go over this too, too much, but um, yeah, now that it's added that kind of audio feature where you can side chain in and you've still got your sync and you can MIDI side chain it, this really is gonna be my go-to kind of ducking tool. And if you really wanted to get crazy, you can still have this side chain and you can turn on this loop feature where it kind of will operate as a traditional kickstart and just play it in those quarter note intervals. So check this out. So it's doing both. It's ducking on that quarter note and ducking when it gets that signal. I don't need that for this mix, so I'll turn that off. But kickstart two is an absolute must and for only like 16 bucks, you have to have it. All right, while we're on kick and bass, the next plugin that I wanna talk about is a plugin from Decap. You've probably seen some of his tutorials on YouTube or you've seen some of his packs on Splice. Decap is awesome. He's always made amazing tutorials, amazing content, amazing samples, and he's produced some insane songs, but he came out with a plugin right around Black Friday and I have been using it ever since. It's called Knock, and basically what this is is this is like a multi-effects tool for processing your kicks. Um, I've used it on snares, I've also used it on things like bongos, I've used it on 808s, but essentially what this is, it's, it's five modules, you've got your punch, you've got your saturate with a couple different saturation modes, you've got a sub right here, so if you're using it on a really short kick and you want to 
pull a sub note in there, similar to like an 808, you can. You've got air. I love using this on things like rock drums that I might want a little bit more kick and kind of transient attack out of. And then you've got your clip right here. In addition to that, you've also got some high pass and low pass filters down here. You've got a gain match button, which I find huge. And you've got a dry and wet knob that doesn't cause any phasing issues whatsoever. So I've tested all of this out. I've used this plugin on probably a hundred songs since I got it and I'm loving it. So here's what this kick sounds like without it. This is completely bypassed. It's fine, it's like your generic kind of trap kick. It's not really offensive, but it's not doing too, too much for me in the mix and I'm finding it needs a little bit more. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on knock and you can see right here that I'm driving up the punch a little bit. I'm saturating it a little bit. I've actually deactivated this. So if you're not using a module, you can deactivate it, save a little bit of CPU. I'm driving just a little bit of top end that we're gonna get from that saturation a little earlier and I am clipping it quite a bit. You can adjust if you want soft clip or hard clip here. I like it right around like 75%. I don't need it too, too hard. And then I am filtering out a little bit of top end. So let me show you each model as I kind each module as I kind of bring it in. So it's giving me that super square, punchy, really, really, really thick kick. And it sits amazing in the mix and it just, it hits so much harder without taking up a lot of headroom. Like if you look here on the meter, we're not really gonna gain much, let's see. Here's without it. Right at like negative four, here's with it. So we're actually losing a dB, so let me turn that up just a little bit more just to like gain match it, gain match it. But you get so much more perceived loudness on this. And it's great. I'll show you the 808 kind of sub feature that I haven't used. You can adjust the decay right here. You can adjust the note right here. So let's just say we want kind of a longer A. So that's a really cool tool if you wanna make your own 808s that you can kind of print and use later. Um, but anyway, I love Knock. I would highly recommend it for anybody doing rock or hip hop or pop or anything that you need really, really punchy kicks in that you kind of can't get that compression right and you can't get that saturation right. Knock to me is kind of a one-stop shop and you can get that, I believe, on plugins at knock.com and that one is $99. That is the most expensive plugin that we're gonna be using today. However, uh, I don't have anything like that at all in my arsenal. I haven't found a multi-tool that works that well for kicks. And uh, kicks seem to be a weak point in most mixes that I hear from people that they send in. So if you're finding that you're not ever getting your kick big and beefy enough, definitely check out Knock because it can make some kind of soft samples really sound insane. The next plugin that I wanna talk about is a Reverb. And you've seen me talk about this company quite a bit. Their name is Baby Audio and I love them. I've used a ton of stuff by them. You've probably seen things like um, Smooth Operator. You've probably seen things like the uh, Super VHS, but they have a new plugin called Crystalline. Crystalline, I don't know the exact pronunciation. And this thing is my new go-to reverb for any kind of synths, any kind of background vocals, and any kind of guitars. Because this thing just sounds insane. I really think that this excels in like really, really, really long reverbs. However, it's completely adjustable. So you can use this as like a short slappy room or the super long shimmery washy reverb. So let me show you how I'm using it in this mix and then I'll kind of explain some of the parameters. So I've got it kind of long and washy right now. You can see that they've split this up into kind of four modules. You've got your reflections where you can pick your size and your sparkle and your width. This is really where you're gonna get a lot of that, you know, reverb tone from. Um, so like, let's just make this small, let's bring the sparkle down and let's bring the width in. Also, they have a ducking tool right here, which basically will sidechain the audio to itself so you don't need to set up a sidechain send or anything. I find that massively helpful for things like synths and things like background vocals, so I don't have to set up another send with a sidechain. I'm just gonna turn it off now so you can kind of hear the plugin in immediate action, and then we'll play around with that later.
So as you can see, the reflections really lets you kind of taper what kind of reverb that you're gonna be using. I'm gonna set this back to large. Then you've got your depth. So this is like your modulation stuff. So you've got like pristine, basic, and high for your resolution. Then you've got your modulation right here, which kind of works similar to modulations in any other um, you know reverb that you have. So the higher you have it, you're gonna get some more of those imperfections, which I kind of like. Turn that back up and then you've got your shimmer right here. You can turn it on, you can turn it off and then you can select kind of what range and how many times shimmer you want. So I'll just set it right there for now. This tool right here, this cleanup tool, I find is like one of the most intuitive and the GUI on this plugin is kind of crazy. So you can see right here that you can kind of drag this and you kind of got a little like a pie graph right here. So you can set your high pass filter and your low pass filter. So I'll set this for like right around 400. Maybe we'll go like right around 10K. And then you can clean up your side. So this is basically going to do a high pass filter on the stereo signal. So, you know, if you want like this really big kind of boomy washy reverb, you're making sure that you're not clouding up your stereo field. So I'm gonna bring this back down to like, I don't know, 400, 500. But you can see as I drag it up, let's drag it to like 6K. You can see that it'll kind of bring anything below that to the center and it'll kind of spread everything above that out to the sides. It's also got a gate built in, which I find super useful, um, especially for things like drums. I'm not gonna use it in this tutorial, but just know that it's in there. You can kind of set it once again, like a pie graph. And then you've got your shape right here, so you can do kind of a tilt shift EQ. Darker, brighter. You've got your smoothing right here. So depending on how you know you want that kind of reverb decay to sound. And then you can even increase your transient attack or your sustain. Um, I'll just show you. So you really have a ton of tone shaping in here. Not to mention, I like that you can sync the kind of pre-delay, which they're calling start and the decay, which they're calling end, you can sync that or you can have that in milliseconds. But I find this super useful to kind of use this reverb more as like a time-based delay almost. And so if I were to plug this in with some settings that I would use, I would duck it out a little bit. I would have like a two kind of bar decay. Let's drive up this a little bit. Let's drive this up a little bit and let's hear how this sounds. So I find this to be a really good reverb to kind of wash things out. But if I want to shorten this up, like let's go to, I don't know, let's go to like a half bar and let's put this on a reverse. You can get some really cool things in this. So there really is a ton of stuff that you can do with this. They've also got a freeze button. So um, if you're looking for a new reverb that just has some, some features that you're not gonna get in most of your kind of stock standard reverbs, I find Crystalline to be amazing. It's gonna be my new go-to reverb for basically anything except for probably my lead vocal. I'll probably stick with like a traditional plate or hull on that. But I'm loving this for things like guitars and synths and background vocals and weird little vocal effects. So definitely check that out. You can get that for $49. And that one is from Baby Audio. Um, they did send it to me to try out a couple months ago, but I liked it so much I bought my own copy anyway. And uh, yeah, I think for $49, you're not going to get a more kind of unique, well-rounded reverb than that. So definitely go check that out. And then the last thing that I want to talk about today is a brand new plugin from a company called Kit Plugins, and it's called MoQ. So here's what MoQ looks like. This is modeled after a kind of famous series of EQs that were built for uh, Motown back in like the 60s. This is one that they have modeled from Blackbird Studios collection. So if you're familiar with Blackbird Studio, they basically have every piece of gear you could ever imagine. And they had one of these kind of Motown EQs sitting there. And so uh, Kit Plugins went in and they modeled it. And this to me is my go-to 
EQ for kind of adding brightness, adding sauce. I had been using like the Mag EQ or like a Pooltech EQ, but this to me, I don't know, everything that I've tried it on just feels amazing. I actually saw this in a Cold Caparoon video. Then I went to try it and fell in love with it immediately. And I bought it and have been recommending it ever since for like the past week or two. And it's a really, really, really simple EQ. You don't have Q settings. You don't have any crazy parameters. You don't have, you know, adjustable EQ bands. It really is just 50, 130, 320, 800, 2K, 5K, and 12.5K. And you can do an 8 dB increase or an 8 dB decrease and anywhere in the middle of that. But there's no Q, there's no like fine adjustments. However, each of these areas I find to just kind of be magic. I don't often find a plugin where I like every range. Normally I've got my EQs that I like for low end and I've got my EQs that I like for top end, but this thing sounds nuts. So let me show you what it sounds like. I'll turn it off and then I will engage it. Here's it with uh, bypass. Let's turn it on. And I just find this to be really magical, especially with like this 12.5. So I do have it on the snare. I'll kind of engage it and disengage it so you can hear it in the mix, but then we'll go to a loop where you can kind of hear it in action a little bit more. So here's it disengaged in the mix. Here's it engaged in the mix. To me, it just kind of tightens that snare up. It adds, or that clap up, it adds a little bit of brightness, takes away a little bit of that kind of like boomy, not really doing anything for the mix kind of mid range. And I loved it on that. I've used it on vocals. I've used it on guitar. I've used it on bass, um, but I'm using it on this perk loop and you'll really get a better kind of feel for what it's doing on here. So here's it bypassed on the perk loop. Turning it on. So I'm not volume, I guess I could bring it like one dB down. So if you really, really like level matching, you can. However, you can hear that what this is doing is I'm taking away most of that low end because we've got some rumble in this loop that I'm using that I just don't really need. Take all that out, 130. Kind of want to thin out that rim knock that's going on. And then here's kind of where the magic is singing. I've just got this from 800 up, just boosting the hell out of this. So as you can see, even as I'm dialing in 2K and 5K, which are normally honestly pretty insufferable inside of a mix, um, it just still sounds really, really good. Like you're not really gonna get a lot of that harshness that you get. I'm really liking this for kind of distorted guitars, which I don't have an example for in this particular song, but I find it really, really hard to kind of boost this 2K and this 5K and have them feel good consistently. But with MoQ, I don't know, it's just really feeling nice on everything that I've used it on. So let me bypass it so you can hear this loop in the mix. Here's it without MoQ on. And you can hear that it's just kind of like lifting everything out a little bit. So I can boost some stuff to even a little bit more, kind of get that top end pumping a little bit more. And you can hear that to me, this kind of just like lifts the sound out. With that said, don't get it twisted. You can also use that 50 and 125 range and really dial in a bass, especially if you have like a live tracked bass. So if you're looking for a new EQ that just has a bunch of sweet spots and really just kind of makes everything sound a little bit, uh, I don't know, just a little bit more refined. To me, this is like the closest thing I've found to like a 3D sounding EQ in a plugin. And uh, yeah, I don't know. After the last week, I'm just really, really loving it. And this is $79 right now from Kit Plugins. I believe it is going to go up to $99, but I do think they have a 14 day trial. So if you want to go check this out, check out their trial and then definitely cop it while it's on its intro sale. Because to me, I think this is on par with some of the $200, $300 EQ plugins that I've downloaded. So definitely recommend this. I recommend all of the top five, but that's going to do it for my five new plugins that you must check out. 
And that's gonna do it. Those are my five favorite new plugins. Again, there's a whole bunch that I could add to this list. These are just five that I'm seeing myself go back to all the time. And they're really cool plugins from really cool developers that I feel like are kind of pushing the envelope. Most of these are pretty unique or at least they're kind of doing a sound better than something that I might have used in the past. So again, I recommend all of these. If you wanna cop any of them, you can check links in the description. But other than that, that's gonna do it for this video. If you like this video, let us know in the comments below. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps out the channel a ton. If you wanna support the channel, head over to makepopmusic.com. But that's gonna be it for this week. We'll be back next week with much more content. But until then, much love everyone, peace.